Hey everyone, this is uh, week two of grade nine science. So we're gonna be doing more of current today. So current, voltage, um, resistance, all that stuff. We're gonna be using the same website we used last time. And we're gonna try to see the connection between some of these terms. So I'm gonna start off, give you a quick intro, and then we'll jump back into that site and collect a bunch of data. So uh, today we're gonna learn charge, we're gonna learn current, we're going to learn voltage, we're going to learn resistance, okay? And then we're going to be collecting data on some of those things on the web. So, charge is the first thing. I know there's a lot of writing on the screen. I'll walk you through it and then make it really, really simple, okay? So, charge is electrons don't travel alone. They travel in a group we call a coulomb, okay? That was the person who discovered it, so it's named after them. So, a coulomb is 6.25 times 10 to the power of 18 electrons okay <laughs> so it's a big group so i know we talk about electricity is electrons moving um but it's a lot of electrons moving so it turns out when we got scientists and figured out okay how many electrons are actually moving through the wire there were so many electrons moving that we're like okay we can't count all these all the time this is kind of ridiculous so instead someone was like okay well why don't we make a package and we'll call it a coulomb, and it will be 6.25 times 10 to the 18 electrons. So that was way easier to use because there's just so many electrons moving that we just want to call them a package. So a package of electrons is called a coulomb because again, there's so many electrons moving, it doesn't make sense to count them one by one. Then we have current. So there's electrons moving. So current describes, well, how many? Okay, so current is the rate of movement of electric charge from one place to another. So current is actually coulombs per second. Okay, so it tells you, now that we know a coulomb is a group, so how many of those groups are moving through your circuit every second? So we're going to use an ammeter to measure this. You measured this last time, you just kind of had no idea what current is. So current is how many electrons are moving per second. Okay, but again, because there's so many electrons, like billions and trillions and trillions, so we just say how many coulombs per second. Okay, so that's current, it's just how many coulombs per second, so we call that amps. Okay, so everything kind of gets a new word because as we started to learn more about electricity and realize there's so many electrons, we had to come up with new terms to describe, okay, what do we call these things? Okay, because you don't want to say 6.25 times 10 to the 18 electrons per second, like that's horrible. Okay, so we just say amp. Okay, so one amp means one coulomb per second. Then we have voltage. So voltage has to do with the amount of energy. So you, what you do is you measure the energy before and then you measure the energy after and you that's kind of how much volts there are, okay? So you've seen voltage on your batteries, right? So the AA up there says 1.5 volts. Um, the other one says 9 volts, right? So different batteries have a different um, potential, electrical potential energy, okay? okay? So there are a lot of weird terms, okay? Load is any electrical device, okay? So a load could be a light bulb, a load could be um, MP3 player, if we still have those, okay? Uh, anything. Okay, anything that's using electricity we call a load. So basically, you measure the voltage before and after. And you were doing this a lot in your activity the other day. Remember we had one wire here, one wire here, we put them on either side. Okay, so you've measured the voltage before, and this is the device we would have been using in real life, <laughs> the voltmeter, but we've just been using the one in the activity where you put it on either side uh, to get a sense for what the voltage is. You can test a battery to see what the voltage is. So what's the difference in energy from one side to the other? Like what's its maximum potential that it could give you? And you can also test the voltage of light bulbs or of motors or whatever you want to see how much energy is it using. What's the difference between before the electrons went through and after they've left, how much energy, how much has changed, okay? So resistance is a property of a substance to hinder the movement of electricity and turn it into another form. So the most common kind of resistance is the light bulb or like some kind of heater. So what you do is you have some sort of um, filament inside of the light bulb here. And what happens is that as electricity goes through, 
because the wire is so thin, the wire heats up. It has a, a lot of high resistance, so the wire gets really, really hot. It gets so hot that it starts to glow. Okay, so the classic light bulb, um, the Thomas Edison light bulb, right? It's just, it gets so hot that it starts to glow, and that's why it produces light. Um, we use the same exact idea for something like a heater. Okay, the idea is you're just trying to make it go through something with high resistance, and it will create this heat, okay? So resistance is just how much is a substance going to reduce the flow of electrons. Okay, you can also do the same thing with a motor. It's a little bit more complicated about how electricity turns into motion, but the same basic idea. There's some kind of resistance to the flow of electricity, and that's powering some kind of device. So a light bulb, a heater, or some kind of motor. Okay, so every device will have some type of measurement um, called an ohm. Okay, so again, I said we're always giving things weird terms because we don't want to count full on the number of electrons, um, so we call that amps. Okay, so everything has kind of a term. So here we use something called ohms for dealing with resistance. Okay, and it gets this interesting symbol called omega. Okay, you can use an ohm meter to do this. So in the activity today, we're going to see how does changing the resistance of a light bulb, so having a high resistance light bulb or having a low resistance light bulb, and we're going to see what does that change about the voltage, what does that change about the current. So for resistance, there's some things in your house that obviously have very low resistance, like anytime you see a copper wire, you want low resistance material because then electrons will flow through really easily. Okay, so this copper obviously has very low resistance because electrons can flow through it very, very easily. Something like the rubber coating has very, 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 very high resistance so that the electricity is not just going to go directly through it, it's not going to electrocute you, all those things. So pretty much every wire is going to have some type of rubber coating on the outside, some type of coating so that the electrons only move through the copper that's in the middle. Okay. Uh, there are some things that have high resistance, not as high as the rubber, but when I was talking about the light bulb from before, there's a type of metal called tungsten. It has a high resistance, meaning that yes, electricity can go through it still, so it will still go through the light bulb, but the resistance gets so much higher in that filament that it starts to get really, really hot, and that heat causes it to glow. So that's how the first light bulb was made. They just found something that had a high enough resistance that it would get really, really hot, but not so high so that electricity would never go through it. Okay, so different materials are going to have different kinds of resistance or different levels of resistance. Um, other things that matter, we might get into this later, but just for the sake of it, um, other things that can matter is that the, the length of your wire, so if you have a longer wire, that's a higher resistance. So the little cartoon has them getting tired, but basically um, the longer your wire, the higher the resistance to the flow. Okay, also the thickness of your wire matters, okay, so if you have a very thin wire, for example, if you look at a light bulb, you'll notice that the filament, or if you have those old style light bulbs, the filament in the middle is very, very thin, meaning that um, it has a higher resistance, so it will have, the electrons have a harder time flowing through it, whereas if you have a really thick wire, that's going to allow for the electrons to flow through really easily, so that's low resistance, and temperature matters as well. Um, they always talk about keeping your computer cool, right? So we know that when the temperature gets really, really hot, it's harder for the electrons to flow through it. Okay, so your task for today is number one, we're going to collect a bunch of data from the simulator that we used last time. Two, we're going to try to make a graph from that. So again, we're using a bunch of technology to today, so you could do it by hand, but also why not use Google Sheets or something like that. Okay, so I'll show you how to make a graph for it. And three, if possible, this is the, if you think you can handle it thing, so you're going to create a formula that shows how voltage and resistance are related to current. So it says there, create a formula uh, that shows how you could calculate the current if you know both the voltage and resistance. So that is how are voltage and resistance related to current. So you're going to look at how those three things are related. And so let's jump into the simulator now. Okay, so this is the basic um, data tables that you need to fill out for the activity. So we have table number one. We're going to try to collect a bunch of data where we keep the battery the same, and then we change the light bulbs. Okay, so we keep adding more and more resistance. 
And then we're going to do a second data collection where you use the same light bulb, but then you change the battery. Okay, so you're altering the resistance of the battery every time. So let's collect our first piece of data here, and then we'll make it really simple. So you're going to go into this, same as before. I'll put the link in the description. And you're going to make your circuit. So I got a lot of these handed in to me last week, which was great. People are doing pretty good with this, so I hope that doing it again will be really straightforward. So we make our circuit like so. Again, I make it a box just so it's easy to see. And we go to our data, and we want to check which numbers we should be using. So we go to data. It says use 9 volts. Make sure you have a, a light bulb with a resistance of 9. So we go in here. We say, okay, uh, battery. We can use all kinds of different volts, okay? But we want nine. There we go. You go into your light bulb. Uh, again, it can have all kinds of resistances. And yeah, we don't want zero. Uh, <laughs> resistance of nine as well. There we go. And we want to find the current. So cut out a little section here. We want to measure the current. Great. So it says the current is one. So we go into our data and we say one. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, next we're gonna change. It says different light bulbs. So the resistance is 18 now. So you go back into your circuits and you say, I want this to have a resistance of 18 so that it's different. So when this is 18, okay, my current is 0 0.5. So I go back in here and I say 0 0.5, okay? Then the next one is nine volt battery. So that's the same battery and 27 resistance. So I go in here, I say this light bulb, I want it to be 27. Okay, by the way, if we were doing this in real life, we'd have to keep getting a totally new bulb. We'd have to go into you know, into the box, get a bulb with this resistance, get a new bulb with the new resistance, get another bulb, right? But because this is a simulation, we can just keep changing the resistance of the bulb. So now we have a new light bulb with a 27 ohm resistance. So now our current is 0 0.33. So we go 0, whoops, 0 0.33. Okay, so this is all of your data. It says here, choose any resistance that you want. So you might choose, oh, 35, or you might choose 40. It doesn't matter. Choose whatever you want, okay? And again, do it again. So make any resistance that you want, okay? You could do as you wish, okay? And then write down uh, the current just to fill out the rest of this table. The second table is very similar. Um, the first piece of data is identical, so 9, 9 volts. 9 ohms, you record the current. So we go in here, we make sure this is 9, good it is. We make sure this is 9, okay great. Um, we see the current is 1, that's fine, we already knew that. So we put a 1 here. Then um, you're going to change the battery. So changing the battery, it says here 18 volts we want, and we're going to keep our light bulb the same at 9 ohms. So we go in here, we say light bulb, 9 ohms, that's great. So again, battery, you can keep adding more batteries, uh, but by far the easier thing to do is just pretend you have a different battery. Pretend you have a battery that's 18 volts. So you're just going to change this battery to say 18 volts. And we notice the current is 2. So we go in here, we say, okay, great, 2. Um, here, voltage is 27. Resistance is 9, so we go in here, we say, okay, new battery. This new battery will have 27 volts, and we check the current. Okay, the current is 3, so we go in here. Okay, so you're probably noticing some kind of pattern. Again, finish the data yourself, uh, collect the data, and then you're going to make a graph. Okay, so the last thing you're going to do is make your graph. So your graph, you're only going to need stuff from table number 2. You're just going to need the voltage and your current, okay? And what you're going to do 
is you're going to try to make a graph using your data from table number two, and you're just going to graph the voltage against, against the current. Okay, so you will get some kind of line something sort of like this. Um, I'm not telling you the exact numbers right now because you have to use your data for that, right? But you should get some kind of linear situation, I hope, and that will really, really help you with the goal of this week, which, as you remember, was to find the formula. How can you find resistance if you know uh, the voltage and the current? Okay, so if you know voltage and current, how are you finding resistance? Okay, you'll probably find a lot of help with this online, so check that out, and I will give the answer sometime early next week. Okay, bye everyone.